Hey everyone, this is uh, Mr. David here, and um, I'm just making this video to go over the IA for IB history. Uh, this is kind of a general introductory video. We're just going to be going over the various parts, um, how this is scored, what exactly the IA even is, and then we'll be going over each of the sections. But this is just a general overview, so as we go um, to each of the sections throughout the year, we'll uncover these more specifically and in bigger detail. Um, I'm just hopeful that this will give you some guidance, a little bit of background, a little bit of overview, um, and this is a video that you can reference as we are uh, going through um, the IA process. So, uh, what does the IA stand for? Well, the IA is known as the Internal Assessment, and if you're an IB Diploma student, really in all your classes, you're going to be taking and completing an internal assessment. Um, they're gonna look different from class to class, but that overarching concept is gonna be relatively familiar. And again, the point in this video is just to discuss the internal assessment for history. Okay, so uh, first off, how is the internal assessment scored? Well, if you remember, when you're a senior, you're gonna be taking your IB history exam, and there's gonna be questions stemming on this uh, going back to your junior year and it's going to be essay based um, and that's known as an external assessment because that's going to be graded outside of the classroom by some external grader somewhere and that those components are going to account for 80 percent of your final IB history grade now that means that this internal assessment done internally graded by me done internally in the classroom throughout our time together is going to be worth 20% of your final IB history grade. Um, as far as the class is concerned, this is going to be worth 10% of your second semester grade, as well as 10% of your first semester senior year grade and 10% of your second semester uh, senior year grade. So obviously a lot at stake. And what this also means is that, you know, when it comes to the external assessment, you don't know what question is going to be asked of you. And so that can mean, you know, some anxiety. And it could also mean that maybe you get to the test and, and you're not feeling confident about a question that you have to answer. And again, I'm going to try to make sure we do everything to not put you in that spot, but it's just an inevitability. However, with the internal assessment, you're doing this ahead of time. So it's 20% of your grade for this that's just done. And so hopefully, and you, and you know exactly what you're doing. And so hopefully that provides some solace, provides some comfort and relief here. Um, in simplest terms, the internal assessment is a research paper on the topic of your choosing. Um, I always suggest picking a history topic that we cover in class just because that will provide you with some necessary background. Uh, but at the same time, if you're really passionate about something historically related that we don't necessarily do in class, and it fulfills the checklist and the components of a good question and a good topic, then that's totally okay to use. Uh, but as long as it's historically related, um, and again, you pick it on a topic of your choosing so you're really able to enjoy the process. The internal assessment is 2,200 words, so that is an actual limit. It cannot be more than 2,200 words. If it's more than that, um, I have to stop reading. I have to cut it off, which means that you're going to get hurt in the points. Um, and we would say it shouldn't be really anything less than about 2,000 words. And we'll get a little bit more into the specific word allocations as we move through each section. There are three major sections. I'm going to go over these in, in more detail um, in the next slide so you can see exactly what these sections are. And the way we're going to do this is that we're going to do each section one at a time so it's manageable so you can just focus on the one section make sure it's really good. I can provide you feedback for that section and then you're ready to make the suggested um, corrections and things like that. Um, the other thing that's included is a bibliography and a bibliography is very necessary. These are all your sources coming together. Um, this bibliography though is not worth any points. However, the caveat is that is that if you do not include a bibliography, you're going to get an entire score of zero on your internal assessment. Because if you don't submit a bibliography, you're basically saying you've plagiarized this entire paper, um, so it cannot be accepted. So the bibliography is going to be really the first step into this whole process. Um, 
The other thing that can be added to your IA is an appendix or um, appendices if you have multiple things. Um, my biggest rule of thumb for that is that if you think that it would add value to your paper, add an appendix. All right. For example, if you're doing something in regards to propaganda and you're referencing a specific image, an appendix is a very good idea. Let's say a lot of your evidence is based on graphs and statistics and things like that, and you have these really good tables that you keep on referencing, include these tables as an appendix. Uh, but do not force an appendix because sometimes the grader gets annoyed at having to constantly, you know, go to the back of the document, find the appendix, etc. But again, if it adds value to the paper, please add that. And so again, um, really when you start to write um, and research and you start to really analyze your research, you'll probably be able to determine, okay, you know what, this, this would be something really good to add in my appendix versus other topics, you'll say, yeah, not necessary, uh, not, no reason for this to occur. All right, so like I said in the last slide, there are three sections of your IA. I'd like to now get into kind of the specifics of each one of those sections. Uh, part one is known as the identification and the evaluation of sources. Um, the entire IA is worth 25 points. This section alone is worth six out of the 25 points, and it's gonna be roughly 500 words. Now, 500 words is not a limit. It's what is referred to as a suggested allocation, so what IB thinks is appropriate. And sometimes American students, they really have trouble deciphering, you know, what's appropriate because you're never going to get probably exactly 500, right, which makes sense. And so some people say, ah, you know, in America, we always hear this, um, you know, four to five pages. You know, that makes sense. So 500 words, what's appropriate? Well, I would say... Use the rule of 10%. So give yourself a 10% range. So 10% of 500 would be 50. So that would mean a range of 450 to 550 words. Um, so that should help you kind of be able to establish what would be appropriate for this. The next section of the IA is known as the investigation. This is really where you're going to bring all your research together. And this section is really the bulk of the IA worth 15 of the 25 points, so 60% of all the points, and then roughly 1,300 words. And again, we'll use that same 10% frame of reference. that means mean 1170 to 1430. So that should be roughly your frame of reference. Just know that if you go over in a section, you're going to have to cut back somewhere else because remember that 2200 at the end is a strong limit. It cannot go past it. So if you go you know, to 550 in part one, just realize that either in part two or part three, you're going to need to cut down a total of at least 50 words uh, so you're able to make that limit. Part three is worth only four of the 25 points, and it's only about 400 words. Um, you know, when part three was pushed in the new curriculum, a lot of teachers and other people from IB, they really looked at this section and they said, ah, oh, this should be an easy four points for any diligent student. That's actually not accurate, and this section has been relatively challenging to achieve the maximum amount of points. And so we'll talk about how to avoid some kind of the common errors and not taking this section uh, for granted. Um, again, like I said already, 2200 word count is the limit. That's a strong limit, can't go over. And again, follow that 10% rule for the word allocation and suggestion. And then a bibliography is required. Also, every time you cite, you're going to be footnoting. Uh, we're gonna, we've talked about this already, we've done a little bit of it, but we'll get more into it as we go through. Um, but just realize that your bibliography is not part of that 2200 word count and neither are your footnotes. And I'll put the smiley face there because if it was, you would really struggle with that 2200 word count. You would feel like you just started writing and then, oh my gosh, I, I gotta stop. So this is actually very beneficial for you. Um, This, by the way, is kind of what I've repeated, but this is directly from the IB guide, which you have access to, um, also from some of the handouts I've given to you and things like that, so you can just see this a little bit better. The IEA in history used to be about six or seven sections, and it was just so scattered, and it was really hard to uh, kind of be effective, and so this uh, setup um, with the three sections as opposed to the alternate one just seems a lot stronger and a lot better. 
All right, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to establish what is going to be your topic. What are you going to study? So let's talk about this. First off, your topic for IB history must be in the form of a question. So you wouldn't, for example, say technology during the Vietnam War. Okay, that's nice. That's kind of maybe your broader theme, but you're going to narrow it into a specific question. Okay, how did the use of Agent Orange impact the United States' campaign in Vietnam? Again, I'm just kind of spitting this up, but you can see much more specific in the form of a question. What you also notice about that kind of example is it's it's not obvious. Um, you know, if you took, you know, basic world history or something like that, you might have gotten a question, you know, what were the causes of the French Revolution? Okay, that's, that's nice, but it's very obvious. All right, okay, these were the causes, you know, whatever. So it's not very, that's not very uh, good. Um, a way in which you're going to do that is you need to be specific. Okay, so again, you need to narrow it to, you know, a specific event, a specific era of time. You need to really speci uh, specify what you're saying. What it also means is you need to stick to a very tight time frame. Uh, you don't want to be talking about, you know, the colonial American period. That lasts from about 1607 to, you know, the 1770s. It's way too long for you to cover in, in 2200 words. So you really want to make sure you kind of slow yourself down and you really tighten up what exactly you'd like to study. Even though you are going to use a question, you want to make sure the question isn't cursory. So for example, you're not going to say this, uh, you know, discuss this. Okay, well first off, that's not really a question either. So you're not going to do that. You're not going to do a question is. You're not going to do question are. You know, those are those are bad stems. Because they're so obvious of questions. An is or an are question is usually like a yes or no. So this is no good, okay? Instead, you want to use these type of stems. To what extent? How? Why? These aren't the only ones, but these are popular. And what you'll realize is that if you ask a good question using these stems, you're going to come up with an answer that's not obvious, that's not just so basic, okay? It's going to really kind of lend itself to a, a much greater conversation where you're going to use your sources, you're going to use proper analysis, to really bring everything together. Um, kind of a general rule, let's say you're come, trying to come up with some questions and things like that. Whatever question you give, make sure you can actually answer the question stated by the end of your paper. Then now that answer goes beyond um, the kind of original and the basic and, and beyond the obvious, okay? And again, it should be, you know, an original type answer that, that really kind of makes sense. Here I have some example of some bad IA topics and some questions versus some good ones. Here's, here's, look at this first one. How have women's roles changed under Castro's? This is very descriptive, okay? This is no interpretation. This is, you know, this would just be very basic, flat answer. Here's a fix. To what extent were Castro's efforts to achieve gender equality between 1959 and 1990 driven by ideological interests versus political and economic ones? It's a powerful question. And again, that's very specific. That brings itself to a lot of answers, etc. Look at... Uh, the last one, the U.S. Civil War. That, that's all the question is. No, no, no. That's just that's just a time. That's just an event. So what are we going to say? What conditions and factors explain the victory of the unit forces over those of the Confederacy in American Civil War? Much stronger, again, answerable, but at the same time, you know, um, nothing too crazy, but really going to lend itself to a nice, deep conversation. Once you've established your question, the next thing you need to do is your bibliography. So let's talk about your bibliography. If you've done any type of research paper before, you've composed a bibliography, you've actually done them for this class, but you just want to realize that your bibliography is really everything because this is where you'll be getting your important information from. This is where you're getting your facts. This is where you're getting your quotes, your paraphrases, your images of using images, anything like that. Um... Do not enter into the research with an answer to your question. And so don't say, okay, this is my question. Okay, well, I know the answer. It's going to be this. No, no, no. You're not going to do that. You're going to come in with a very blank mind. And the reason why is because you're going to read the sources. You're going to comprehend the sources. You're going to analyze the sources. And you're going to use the sources to come up with your findings and information. Not, oh, you know, this is what I think the answer is. So I need to make sure I only find sources that support this. No, no, no. 
that's that's a really poor decision. That's not really a part of this process. That's not going to lend to success. So that's what you need to do um, in order to be successful here is just let the sources speak for themselves. Your bibliography investigation will be cited in the Chicago style, which are footnotes. Again, we've done this a little bit before. I'm going to get you more acclimated to that, but I don't want anyone doing um, kind of MLA parenthetical citations. It's not really appropriate for history. Um, you also realize it's just much stronger to put it in the footnotes as far as your word count is concerned. It's a lot easier to decipher through. Um, do you realize that research is forming the, the foundation of what you're going to do? And what that means is that it's incredibly rewarding, but that reward is not instant. It takes a lot of time to really research correctly. And it, you're going to go through times of frustration. And so sometimes you're going to go through this process and you're researching and you literally can find nothing. Do not worry if that happens. That's actually a very normal part of this. It's something that happens very regularly. Take a deep breath. Maybe you need to take a break. You know, if you're just frustrated, you're never going to be able to find anything and just, you know, do something else and come back to it when you have a better mindset. Um, the, the sources will come. Okay, they, they will. Okay, it's guaranteed. As be, but but there, there are some secrets. What are the secrets? You need to give yourself time. If you're waiting to the last minute to get your research done, you're never going to be successful. And in addition, you need to give yourself patience. All right. And again, you need to be able to realize that, hey, you know what? I didn't find it. I, I researched for three hours today. I didn't find anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that's going to necessarily happen. I'm saying if it does, it's okay. These are natural things. So again, just relax and calm yourself so you're able to stick this through. Um, I just included these coins because this could be part of your bibliography as well. Um, I'm not sure if it would apply to a topic that you choose, but at the same time, realize that obviously we're talking about books. We're talking about articles, we're talking about magazines, but we're also talking about images. We're talking about primary sources here as well, absolutely. Uh, these could really lend themselves to a bigger conversation, so open yourself up to that. Um, let's include a couple memes for some laughs. You know, this is a kid from Bowling Dynamite. Yeah, I found a new research topic. You say it's getting pretty serious. Yeah, I mean, that, that's really what goes on here. And again, it, it, that's why picking a topic that you like is so important because the IA is going to be a huge part of this class, but also your high school career. Um, this, by the way, just some things um, about historians. And again, you do want to realize that as you undertake the IA process, you are becoming a quote unquote mini historian. You look at what's going on here, a lot of stuff in regards to reading, you know, writing, having a lot of stuff in front of you, the computer. And things like that. And so those are all parts of this that you need to be thinking about. Um, and again, like I said, you know, you're 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 not, you know, a full level, you know, historian as in you work for the university and you have a PhD in history, but at the same time you're undertaking some of that process as you go through the IA. And IB really wants you to kind of dive into that process. Research. That's what all this will relies on. And again, you know, spending your time getting the good research together is going to mean the big difference in the end. Um, and again, you know, this is me after finishing the U.S. History Research Project. Yeah, you're going to be excited. You're going to be pumped up. But at the same time, it's going to take time. And again, you need to allow yourself that time so you can feel that, that gratification. Okay, so let's get a little bit more specific into each of the specific sections. So part one is the identification and evaluation of sources. So what exactly does this mean? First off, like we said earlier, the source six of the 25 points, and it's roughly 500 words. 500 words, by the way, about two, maybe three pages. Okay, so what you're going to do here is you, the first thing you're going to do after you've selected your question, you compile your bibliography, is that you're going to pick two sources from your bibliography, just two. Your bibliography will have closer to about 10 to 15. So you have your two sources from your bibliography. Pick any ones you want, but once I tell you what you're going to have to do with them, this will hopefully guide your thinking of which ones you choose. You're going to analyze the sources or evaluate the sources using OCP VL. Now, we've done the OCP VL in class, but let's just remind ourselves, O, origin, C, content, P, purpose, and then the values and limitations. And again, those values and limitations, that VL, 
is in specific regards to the origin, the content, and the purpose. Now, when we talk about an origin, where is the source from? Who is its author? When was it written? Or when was it drawn? Or when did that happen? Okay. Uh, we talk about a content. What's included? Okay. What's there? And we talk about a purpose. Okay. Why? Why was the source created? Okay. What was the purpose behind it? And again, there are values and limitations to each one of those. And again, we're not just going to say this is the value of the source. When I say the value for the origin is, you know, the value to the content, the limitation of the purpose, that's how we're really going to make sure we try to get as close to those six points as possible. A couple of tips on this section. First off, every source has values and limitations. And those values and limitations are very much related to these three categories of the origin, content, and purpose. If possible, and again, you might not be able to do this, but you, you, most topics will lend itself to this. Pick a one secondary and one primary source. What IB wants you to basically do is they don't want you to evaluate the same exact source because that really means you're only evaluating one. So what they want you to do is pick kind of two sources that are at least different. So at least if they're secondary sources, you know, make sure they're different enough where IB feels confident that you know what you're talking about. Um, again, really dive into your sources, discover their values, and discover their limitations so you can really analyze that um, in the best possible way um, and really come up with a concrete answer uh, for the sec. Uh, despite the ways rubric for the criterion A, and again, I've passed this out and we go, we're going into more detail on this, but what you can see here is that look at 5.6. An appropriate question for investigation has been clearly stated. You'll notice this. You need to state the question first sentence in this section. You've identified and selected appropriate and relevant resources. Part of this is you're going to explain, like it says there, the relevance of the sources to the investigation. And then the last part is just basically have you analyzed and evaluated these two sources appropriately. And again, you're not going to say, you know, the source is biased. So it's limited. Okay, how? Okay, what makes it biased? Okay, what gives it its limitations? Is it something specific about the author? Okay, remember, everything is biased in some way, shape, or form. So that's never an acceptable response. All right, part two is your investigation. So let's talk a little bit more about the investigation specifically. Like we said already, the investigation is roughly 1,300 words, and it's going to be worth 15 out of the 25 points of your IA. Okay, the way you do this with only 1,300 words is you're going to start with a very brief intro, okay? And, and this is really just a basic background. And usually, again, I'm, I kind of hound you on your test essays. You need a thesis. You don't really need a thesis in your intro, okay? You don't really need to do that. You're just going to get some kind of gentle background, ease the reader into it. And then you really spend the majority of the time, you know, the, the vast majority of the words, establishing an organized response to your question from the research all right so that's really what you're doing here and then at the end you finish with a conclusion and this is kind of different than your test conclusion when you do a test and you kind of conclude you're not really bringing up new information you're kind of just establishing everything you know the bow on the on the present okay in this conclusion you're really going to give this the discovery and findings from your essay and this is the answer to, to your question and then all of a sudden the reader they read the conclusion, it's consistent with what you said throughout the body, and they say, ah, I see where this student has gone. Well, that's very, very well done. A couple tips in regards to the investigation. Again, you're going to be using 10 to 15 pieces of sources. Do not organize yourself on ideas or major concepts uh, just from one book. Instead, integrate the various key points, integrate the various key concepts together and interweave it um, and use the sources together as opposed to seeing them separately. Um, as I've said before, you're going to be using the Chicago style throughout the investigation. Anytime you use a direct quote, you footnote. Anytime you paraphrase, you don't really use direct quotes. Sometimes students just think, oh, only direct quotes and I paraphrase. No, no, no. Everything that's not yours, you cite and you cite in the Chicago style. Um, and that's what I say there. Again, don't just think, okay, you know, just direct quotes. No, no, you need to do that together. And the last thing here is that don't just laundry list a bunch of facts and a bunch of quotes, okay? You need to add substantial analysis to bring together and explain your facts quotes. 
good substantial analysis, especially for IB history, is not explaining your quote. Okay, that's very cursory. Good analysis is explaining how this quote or how this fact or this paraphrase or whatever it may be answers your question or ties at least to the question and the key points. And so that's what you're doing there. You can see here, because it's worth 15, it's a little bit bigger for the mark band. But look what we have here. The first thing, and I'm 13 to 15, because we should be aiming for the top, right? The investigation is clear, coherent, and effectively organized. So that's a big, big deal. The con investigation contains well-developed critical analysis that is focused clearly on the state question. Evidence from a range of sources is used effectively to support the argument. This last one, there's a valuation of different perspectives. And so again, whatever question you've asked, there's another side to it. So you're just going to make sure you include that and you evaluate it, why you decide you've chosen is correct or why you've supported it. And then you've argued to a reasoned conclusion that is consistent with the evidence and arguments provided. What you'll see here is that this mark band is very similar to what you've been doing in your essays for this class. Okay, the only difference is that now you're getting this from a wide range of sources to kind of bring this together, but all the really other elements are exactly the same. And just Napoleon Dynamite, you know, he's all excited about his history, IA. Okay, the last section is known as the reflection. And so a couple points to make about the reflection. First off, like I said already, worth four of the 25 points, only about 400 words. Here's what you're doing in the reflection. The reflection is a time for you to talk about the methods historians use and the challenges that historians face. Now, you're not just coming up with these in a vacuum. Instead, these are methods and challenges that are based on your specific process. Okay, so you're coming up with these ideas based on things that you've encountered and also based on what you've done. Now, like I said, kind of what to start this. When this section was introduced, a lot of people thought, wow, this is going to be an easy section. This won't be a problem, etc. However, this has turned into a very tough section and one few have gotten full marks on. Why? Pretty simple. Most people have gone into using too much personal insight. And so, again, this is about you, but it's more so about you as a historian. It's not about personal problems. It's not about those type of things. It's how you have become an historian. So let's get more into that with the tips. Use your personal experience to reflect, but do not dwell too much on personal issues and problems. Okay, so again, the reflection is never an appropriate time to talk about computer problems because historians do not face computer problems, really. Okay, it's not a personal time to be talking about, you know, how you're busy being in high school. Again, I'm, I know you're busy. I'm very, you know, sorry about that, or, but I'm excited for you too. We can talk about that another time. It just doesn't belong here. Again, you procrastinating is not an adequate answer either. Okay, talk about the challenges in finding historians, the reliability of sources, using all the information together, you know, coming across research. Those are the things that you need to do in order so this can be brought up together. I would very much suggest you should keep a journal during the IEA experience so you can reflect back on your experiences. You do this during CAS, okay? You keep you know, reflection journal type stuff for your experiences there. So this is not much different than that. Okay. And again, you can just, it doesn't need to be long, but it's just something for you to go back to. Oh yeah. Remember when I was doing this and I was having all this trouble here. Oh yeah. That, that's what historians do. You know, things like that. That's really going to help you be successful. Okay. Here's the mark bands for the reflection. As you can see, it's not very long, but let's look at that three, four. The reflection is clearly focused on what the investigation highlighted to the students about the methods used. So what methods do historians use? Um, the reflection demonstrates clear awareness of the challenges the historian faces and or limits of the methods used. And then there's a clear and explicit connection between the reflection and the rest of the investigation. Your reflection should not be able to go back on the back of anybody else's IA. Okay, it belongs distinctly on yours. So maybe that means you bring up some specific sources. Okay, you know, things like that. That's going to really help you be successful here. Um, here I've just included some videos on the roles historians have. These are mostly from historians themselves talking about what kind of they do, what what's the role of a historian, why would people even be 
a historian, and this are some things to help you, um, not only with the reflection, but really throughout this entire process of the IA. Um, I'll finish off with just some tips for success. First off, stick to the calendar that I'm going to give you. Your grade depends on it, but really, so does successful progress. Okay, again, if you wait till the very end, you're going to have a very challenging time getting everything together. Um, enjoy the process. Again, this is very enjoyable. It's one of the things that makes this class unique. Um, so if you pick the topic that you like, you give yourself the time to do this successfully, you will enjoy this, but you need to give yourself that. Um, pay careful attention to the mark schemes and improve your work based on this and my feedback. Uh, my feedback is based on the mark schemes and the mark bands. So again, you just want to be paying attention to that. Um, the wording is relatively simplistic in there. You know what IB is looking for. So make sure you're aware of those things. And lastly, um, kind of appropriate to end on this, the IA takes time. So again, give yourself time to research. Give yourself time to compile your ideas. Give yourself time to make necessary revisions to produce the best possible version of your IA um, so that you're really able to bring everything together. Okay, And again, as we get to each section, we're obviously going to go into way more detail, but this is just to kind of tell you what the IA is about, You know what exactly is going on, what are you kind of expected to do, how are you going to be graded, and how are you going to be kind of successful. All right. Uh, thanks for watching this. Hopefully you uh, revisit this video as we continue through here and talk to you soon.